Oh, so we released the 1122 tier list yesterday, and those of you who watched it will know there is a cheeky, low-key broken tier. Well, these are the underrated champions who are played nowhere near enough for how good they actually are. So in this video, the Jizz is going to elaborate on the 15 most low-key broken champions of 1122, and we've got top laners, mid laners, AD carries. No matter your role, there is a champion in here for you. And for each pick, I will give you the runes and core items you need to run. So let's get into it. Now, the first champion I want to draw your guys' attention to for 1122 is Rengar in the jungle. Now, Rengar isn't that great in lower elos, don't get me wrong, but in Challenger at the moment, this dude has close to a 55% win rate, and one of the reasons for this is that these high elo Rengars are running a different setup to pretty much everyone else. So what most of them are doing is going Fleet Footwork as their keystone, and pairing this with their core items of Essence Reaver, then Eclipse, and then Lord Dominic's Regard. Now, Fleet Footwork is so good because it helps with your clear, and it also helps against enemy champions. That buff that came in a few patches ago is really good when you're dueling it out at Scuttle Crabs, and it also comes in really clutch as well when you're ganking. The movement speed can be really useful. So even though most players will go Ghost Blade and then Dust Blade, Essence Reaver is giving you more ability haste and you're also getting the Spell Blade passive. Now after this going Eclipse, which is giving you the same lethality as Dust Blade, even though you're getting a little less attack damage, you're getting Omni Vamp and you're also getting a passive which is going to help you shred tanks and you're also getting more movement speed and a shield as well. So it's almost like you're playing Drain Tank Rengar but you're going a different assassin setup. Then after this going Lord Dominance Regards, this is going to help you shred those tanks on the enemy team and most bruisers and fighters, even mages are going to go armor in their kit and this helps you get through that defense so try this out in your games guys very few rengars are actually doing this so make use of it then we're going to stay in the jungle for the next three champions so if you don't like rengar one champion you can play in the jungle for 1122 she's not really picked that much and she isn't bad that much either and ever since she got buffed in 1120 she's actually been having a lot more success now it really helps that concrete got nerfed and gore drinker as well overall in the last couple of patches because these bruisers and fighters can actually be pretty scary to play against so for at least right now because there aren't really that many major threats, you are one of the strongest early game champions, and if you can get a lead, you can snowball like crazy. Now it starts with your rune page, so going electrocute and then taking water walking in your secondary tree, this is going to give you the burst damage and the movement speed to gank lanes and have a lot of pressure on the map. Now in terms of your items, nothing has really changed here. Night Harvest is your mythic, followed by Zonya's Hourglass, and then you can either go Morella Nomicon if you need the anti-healing, or even Void Staff if you feel as if you need the magic penetration. Just make sure with whatever core items you build, you are running Sorcerer Shoes as your boots. And just like Rengar guys, at least in higher elo has a 55% win rate, which is certainly one of the highest. So if there was a time to play the Spider Queen, it is certainly an 11.22. Now, next up in the jungle, guys, we have Skarner. And I know Skarner is rarely played, but I'm telling you, 55% win rate, just like Elise and Rengar in high elo. So he obviously works. And just like I said for Elise, because Conqueror is so much worse now for junglers in particular, this means that for champions who don't run Conqueror, like Skarner, because you're running Predator, the jungle is a lot easier. And in your secondary tree, make sure you're taking Celerity and Water Walking. This is going to give you so much movement speed and when you pair this with turbo chem tank your mythic you'll be road running around the map and picking off people like no tomorrow and after turbo chem tank if you get dead man's play thor mail and the fuel boost depending on what the enemy team composition have play to steel caps are great against attack damage teams cooldown boots are really good if you're snowballing and really far ahead of the enemy team or you can go merc treads if the enemy team has a lot of cc and magic damage as well so if you feel as if your team needs a little bit of cc and maybe a bit of tankiness skarner in the jungle at the moment will definitely work out now the last jungler guys who is low-key broken for 1122 and this is going to surprise a lot of you this is wukong now i know wukong is a conqueror champion but the real reason he's really underrated is simply because gore drinker has been nerfed so lots of these other bruisers and fighters like xin Zhao, lee sin these are not as good anymore but for wukong because you go divine sunderer this opens up a little bit of opportunity for you in the jungle and thankfully for wukong as well because you stack conqueror so quickly with the attack speed from your e and your q which resets your auto attack it's pretty easy to get to 12 conqueror stacks so the nerf didn't really mean that much for the Kong. Now after Divine Sundra, make sure you go Black Cleaver and then Steris Gauge. And the funny thing is, guys, Wukong isn't actually played that much in higher reloads in Master and above, but in Diamond and above at the moment, he's a 55% win rate. And once people actually catch on to how good this champion is in the jungle, he will be played so much more. Just make sure to max your Q first, then your E and then your W, and you're good to go. Now I'm excited for these next three picks, guys. We're going to talk about three underrated champions for the top lane. Now this first one, you can play her in the mid lane, and this is Arkali, who is getting buffed in 1122. So your pass is based damage this is up and it's also scaling more of your ap so your passive is all about auto attacking enemy champions right but we can't really do this against ranged champions so in the top lane akali is going to have more value just because you're probably going to be versing melee champions so this passive buff is really great when you go against fighters and short range champions now the conqueror nerf certainly hurt akali a bit like wukong but just the fact you don't have to go gore drinker and pretty much everyone else does this will keep you in good stead just make sure to run bone plating and then overgrowth is your secondary tree and as far as your items go in the top lane you 
really have a couple of options. If the enemy champion is pretty tanky, Riftmaker. If the enemy champion is squishy, take Rocket Belt. After this, you're always going to go Zonya's Hourglass, and then after this, it really depends on what you need. Morella Nomicon, Void Staff, Death Cap, Demonic Embrace. Just think about the enemy team comp and what items you need to actually beat them. And also important for Arcali guys, make sure you're running Teleport and Ignite in the top lane. This gives you a lot more kill pressure in lane, and because you're one of the best snowballing champions, this gives you the opportunity to do just that. Now, another AP champion we see more in the mid lane than in the top lane, this is Silas, but he's actually really good in the top lane, guys. But I just want to say this. Please pick him to counter champions with amazing AP ratio ultimates. So if we think of Malphite, Orn, Shen, Cannon, there are so many ultimates you can make use of in the top lane, whereas in the mid lane, because ranged champions are picked more often, it's kind of hard to get out of the laning phase without being behind. But in the top lane against melee champions, especially against these champions I just mentioned, like Malphite, Orn, Shen, Cannon, the laning phase is nowhere near as hard. So you can get to your Everfrost, your Zonyas, your Cosmic Drive, your cooldown boots, and scale into a game knowing you have their ultimate to steal. But do be careful, guys, in the top lane going against bruisers and fighters because they can definitely ruin your day. Now, the last top laner, guys, I actually just mentioned him. This is Orn. And the reason I'm recommending Orn to you is the reason why so many champions are on this list. Simply because Conqueror, Gold Drinker, these are both nerfed. So if you're a tank top laner, you know that going against Darius, against Set, these scary matchups have become a heck of a lot easier so you can scale into a game and actually get to those team fights without being 0 5. So with Grass the Undying as your keystone, and then as far as your items go, going Frostfire Gauntlet, giving you the HP, then Thormail, Abyssal Mask, Rando, and Zomen. Again, after Frostfire and Thormail, it really depends on the team composition you're against, but Orn is certainly underrated at the moment given the meta, and he has picked nowhere near enough. So guys, if you want a blind pickable tank top laner, Orn is right up there with the best of them. Now we're going to swing back down to the bot lane here, guys, and talk about the AD carries and supports who are underrated for 1122. Now we're going to start with the AD carry. Now there are three of these, and unfortunately they're not AD carries. They're actually AP champions, but played as an AP carry in the bot lane, these actually do better than all those attack damage marksmen. So these three are Karthus, Syndra, and Seraphine. And the reason why these champions work so well is because against attack damage carries, it's not like they're that strong in the early game. So for mages, you can scale for free, but what it really comes down to, guys, is how you synergize with your support. So Karthus and Syndra, these two in particular, work so well with heavy engages. So if you see your support lock in a rel, for example, or if you know your support likes playing these champions, picking Karthus or Syndra gives you an opportunity to capitalize on their CC. But let's say your support picks someone like Sona or Soraka, then Seraphine is an AP carry gives you the ultimate harass bot lane that is probably the most annoying lane to play against in league because the poke the damage it does not stop and because you have so much sustain it's like you never lose traits also the recent ultimate buff to seraphine has kind of gone unnoticed and she's actually got a 55 percent win rate in high reloads as an ap carry in the bot lane so these three champions guys consider them if your team needs ap definitely lock one of them in and you will know why they are on this list now the two supports coming in one of them is actually getting nerf next patch and this is maokai so your w's base damage is down which is actually kind of important because you're all ins in the early game, a lot of those all ins and the damage you and your AD carry will deal come from you. So having less damage means you're not going to get as many kills. And the other nerf for Maokai is that you're healing less of your passive, so less sustain during the laning phase. But the good news is that your saplings are not getting nerfed, and because this is the ability you max first, this is certainly good, but it's just the fact that Maokai is getting nerfed. Less people are going to pick him, but really, it shouldn't change that much. So that's why he's on this low-key broken video. And the other support I would really recommend you to pick is Senna. And thankfully, because you're still getting 8 gold from your miss race, which changed at the start of the season, Senna support is still not played enough, and just like every other champion on this list, she's really going under the radar. Now for your items, it's Kraken Slayer, Rapid Fire Cannon, and Ginsu's Rage Blade, but if you want to, you can go Divine Sundra if the enemy team is pretty tanky, so you can shred their HP bars, and for your boots, make sure you go Swifty Boots and pair all of this with the Glacial Augment page. This makes your auto attacks and your Qs really effective because you're slowing enemy champions, and I would even say here guys that Senna is an AD carry, because right, increase your Myth Wraith spawn rate on minions you actually kill, this is also really underrated. Just run the same rune page and the same items and you'll be sweet. Now we've got three more champions to talk about guys and all of these underrated champions reside in the mid lane. Now the first of these you're going to scratch your head at, I know. This is Singed and I'm being serious, Singed mid with Predator is one of the most untouched but broken things in the game and it's really taken off ever since that recent Predator buff and also the buff to Singed's Q where you're applying Grievous Wounds with your ultimate. So the aim of the game with this setup is to use the Predator to not just run down your lane opponent but to also get to Scuttle Crab and bottom top lane and because you're in the middle of the map this allows you to do so in the top lane you're still kind of stranded and top lane matchups are still really hard for Singe to actually get through and as far as your items go Hextech Rock Belt is a great rush this gives you a dash in the active and also the movement speed and the magic penetration as well is really underrated because you actually deal a lot of damage that people just don't expect after this going Demonic Embrace and then following this up with Azonia's Hourglass this completes your core items and as for your boots going Swifty Boots is always going to be the best choice and if anyone has tried 
this out by the way let me know and let everyone else know in the comments just how good this is now the penultimate champion on this video guys this is Tristana in the mid lane now Tristana has gone down a little bit in popularity recently in the mid lane but let me tell you she is still as strong as ever with Hail of Blades and then Flash and Ignite you have so much kill pressure still and it's really good against melee champions because as soon as they move up for a CS you can jump on their head and you deal so much damage as much burst damage as anyone in the game to be honest and even if the enemy champion does play passive and doesn't give you that opportunity you can do so elsewhere on the map and as for your items going Kraken Slayer, Phantom Dancer and then Infinity Edge or Lord Dominus regards depending on how much armor the enemy team has if they do go LDR if they don't go IE and you have that 60% crit and with Kraken Slayer you just have all the damage you will ever need just make sure to always go Berserker's Grease and you will go Berserk. Now the last underrated champion guys for 1122 this is the gaff Cho'Gaff in the mid lane and really Cho'Gaff in the mid lane has become a big thing since 1119 when Riot reduced your Q's cooldown by a second. So the fact that it's now six seconds makes it a lot more spammable and this ability is really underrated just like Cho'Gaff himself. When you hit this the enemy champion is not just knocked up but they're also slowed by a ton which allows you to gap close land your W and your E's and chomp them to bits and this is one of the main reasons why Cho'Gaff has a 54% win rate in Master and above. And just like Singe guys what you're going to do with your runes is run Predator. I know it sounds a bit weird like why not run a Electrocute or Dark Harvest to get those stacks but because Cho'Gaff doesn't have that much mobility Predator gives you the gap closing potential you need to get close to enemy champions and then running second wind and unflinching gives you the sustain and again also the mobility getting stunned or rooted these aren't going to last as long because that really is your big weakness and it's kind of similar for your items as well you don't need all the damage in the world so going Everfrost for the utility is great then Zonya's Hourglass and then Cosmic Drive you're more about AP and getting more cooldowns off rather than actually just one shotting someone but you still have a lot of damage don't get me wrong and getting sorcerer shoes with this setup is going to give you that magic penetration that you're kind of lacking and let me just say guys that if this is working in higher elo where skill shots are harder to hit it is definitely going to work in lower elos so those are the 15 most underrated champions guys for 1122 let me know in the comments your thoughts or if you think there's another champion out there who we should have mentioned and as always if you did enjoy the video please remember to leave a like down below also hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our future daily uploads and also check out the game week website on your way out linked in the description and comment section and until tomorrow's daily upload, this has been the Jizz. Oh.